What's up you guys? Today we're going to be reviewing a new e-bike called the Engway M20. This bike has dual batteries, dual suspension, a thousand watt motor, and can reach speeds of up to 28 miles per hour. So we're going to unbox this bike, put it together, and take it on its first test ride. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, so here's the bike and the two boxes that it comes with. We're gonna go ahead and take it all apart, put it together, and it should just take one second. Ready? All right, you guys, we're ready to test the Engway M20 e-bike. Dual batteries, dual suspension. Has a 750 watt motor with a thousand watts peak. It has two 13 amp hour batteries for a total of 26 amp hours. It even also has dual headlights as well. Okay, so there's the bike. We're gonna go ahead and take it out and see how it can do on the trail. We're gonna check the top speed. We're gonna go up some really steep hills. We're gonna use the brakes. We're gonna basically run through everything. Now, for a taller guy like me, I can already say where my knee position is is not ideal for pedaling, but it does feel very comfortable. The seat is wide and it feels like you could be pretty comfortable for a long period of time. Along with the full suspension, uh, it goes over the bumps well with my weight sitting further back, like I said, and the battery weight of the two batteries more towards the front. Um, it really is pretty smooth, to be honest. More smooth than I thought it would be. Like I said, I've never had anything like this. I've never had a 20-inch fat tire bike. I've never had a green bike like this with a tan seat. It's a really cool combination. It's very different. I think it kind of stands out in its own way. And very simple. You know, the wheels themselves are not spoked, which is kind of different as well. Like I said, there's just a lot of things about this bike that make it very unique in my opinion. The dual battery setup, the dual headlight setup. And again, I really like these grips. I'm not sure if it shows in the video, but they have a great smoothness to them that just feel not necessarily premium, I guess, but just different again than a lot of other bikes. And so, if you're looking for something different that kind of stands out, but like I said, has the range and doesn't break the bank, this could be an option for you. Even with the integrated brake lights, it's, it's a lot of bike for the amount of money that you're spending. So far, I'm really liking the dual suspension. Very smooth, it does have fenders. So hopefully I won't end this ride covered in water and mud and everything. It has rained here recently. Try out the shifting. Nice and smooth. You know, that seven speed tourney derailleur is very popular. A lot of people don't like it with the Shimano shifter. But you know, I think for value, it's a great option. You're not gonna get much better for that amount of money, you know, unless you wanna pay more. And everyone either has a complaint about the quality or the price. So. If it gets a little bit darker, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the headlights on from the daytime running lights to the nighttime running lights, which get a lot brighter. And it also turns on the rear light, which again is brake integrated. So when you brake, that lights up, which is really nice. That's a feature I wish that came standard on almost all bikes. It's a very simple thing to include. And it really makes riding the bike at night, if you do that type of riding, a lot more safe because cars can see and tell if you're stopping or pulling to the side, you know, or doing something and the traffic is changing in front of you and they're not paying attention or something, it gives them that instant clue, just like you would on a bike or like a motorcycle or a car, that the person in front of you is stopping and you should hit your brakes. So to me, it just seems like a really important safety feature that should be included on all e-bikes, to be honest, at this point. The ride's pretty awesome. I'm actually impressed with the rear suspension there. It uh, has really smoothed out the ride on a lot of this stuff. I recently reviewed a hardtail bike and kind of missed having the full suspension of my other e-bikes. You know, once you have full suspension, it's hard to go back to not having it. And even if it's not the best quality suspension, it just really smooths out the ride. And, you know, if you're an older guy like I am, uh, you start to really appreciate that, I guess, a little more, especially if you're not out to go mountain biking, you're out to just kind of cruise and see the lake and, you know, maybe run down to the store or something like that. It's nice to not have to I don't know, get sore doing that after riding for, you know, an hour or so if you're doing it that long or 
wherever you're going. It just makes the ride that much better. I mean, if you can imagine a car with no suspension versus a car with suspension, even if it doesn't have the best suspension, as long as you have something, that's what matters. I can come out to my favorite spot here to take a quick break, take a look around. I gotta admit, it's a little bit better than I thought it would be, uh, just because of the price and because of having the batteries so close to the seat here. I was concerned about being a taller rider if I was gonna be leaning over those batteries, but honestly, the angle is just about right to where you have your hands in an upright position in your body and you're seated back here. So kind of odd, the weight is further back if you look and you notice the seat your weight is a little further over the back tire than it normally would be over this kind of center post line right th like this. But it's also a smaller bike in total and in height because of the 20 inch fat tires. So pretty cool little like trail bike to take out. Um, I really like the compactness of it and the way it looks with those lights. So you can see here if I turn the high beams on or the regular night lights. Okay, now that's with the daytime lights, which is the LED strip there, and then the night lights are the circular ones that will kind of light up the road as you drive. So when you turn those headlights on, again, like I mentioned, it turns on these, this backlight, which is integrated to the brakes, which is great. Comes with fenders. This model in particular comes with the two batteries. If you're interested, I'll have a link in the description. Be sure to check that out. This is the Engway M20 e-bike, has a little written inscription there saying explore a new way which is pretty cool all right so now we're going to hop back on the bike here there is also a walking mode for this so you can hold the button down on the on the pedal assist selector you can hold that down and it gives you a walking speed mode so if you want to walk it up a big hill we're actually gonna try that over here. There's this hill that I often walk my bikes up because it's just so rutted and steep. I'm sure it won't show on camera, but it's a very difficult hill to go up. Um, and I often just use the walk mode on a lot of my e-bikes because they have it and it makes it very easy to go up. So we're gonna go ahead and test that here shortly. I'm gonna shut up for a little bit so you can hear it kind of ride over some bumps and hear any noises and how smooth it is. Okay, so here's this massive hill right here, okay? I know it doesn't look very big on, mo on camera, but I was just holding full throttle and came up to it and it gives you almost a dead stop. I'd have to say this hill is probably Oh, I don't even know, maybe 15 degrees. It's very steep. And as you can see, there's a lot of roots and rocks and trenches that are probably six to 10 or 12 inches deep. And you really don't wanna get on the wrong path. Now coming down it, it is possible. Um, as long as you have really good brakes, you can come down it, no problem. But going up, even in a high gear, it's pretty difficult to do. Uh, it is possible, but you lose a lot of traction on the rear tires. I'll go up this sometimes on my bikes and try to see how far I can get. I'll get about halfway or so, and then the wheel will start actually spinning in the rear. So it's not something that's very easy to go up, but with this walk mode, like I said, if you hold this plus button or minus button down on the controller, as you can see there, the bike starts going all on its own. And it's a nice slow speed, so you don't have to worry about it running away from you. And as soon as you let go of this plus or minus button for the uh, pedal selector speed, it will stop. And so, you can see here these massive ridges and you know roots and everything that are coming up through here but this is a great option you put your hand here back on the back of the seat you hold that button down and it just walks right up it and it almost kind of helps you get up the hill too because it's giving you a powered kind of assist right here's the steepest part to help get up that hill and it gives you something to hold on to it does have an adjustable kickstand so you can adjust this screw and make it longer or shorter to your desired height but that is what we just came up right now it's pretty steep as you can see I, I can't imagine that it shows the way that it actually is on camera but overall it's a very steep like I said downhill is doable 
uphill is not as much. All right, so there's the bike. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the lights on now at this point. Again, I'll show you what that looks like when I hit the brake. Pretty cool. Kickstand up. Let's go ride. Like I said, not a ton of torque, not a ton of power. It's a very smooth start and stop. Um, but I think the biggest feature of this bike is affordability. It's definitely one of the cheaper bikes that I've ever reviewed on this channel. And it's got probably some of the most range that I think I've ever seen, uh, or at least amp hour capacity, having the dual batteries of any bike I've ever had. So that in combination with these 20 inch wheels, you know, theoretically should give you a decent amount of range. I believe on the website, they didn't put the numbers too astronomically high, which kind of surprised me. Um, I'll have to double check those numbers and I'll post those here on the video. But I want to do some real world testing because at this 13 amp hour capacity battery with the other one, 26 total, I would assume you should be able to get 80 miles of range on this. Uh, I've done other bikes that have just over 20 amp hours of capacity and running them at a very low, you know, granted pedal assist one level type speeds. I've been able to get close to 80 miles of range out of them. But assuming you're using pedal assist five and you're getting 750 to 1000 watts out of the uh, motor, you know, it's going to definitely reduce the amount of range you can get out of it. But stay tuned for a future test. We'll definitely be checking that out. So these batteries also have a push button battery gauge on top with five levels to let you know the charge level of the bike. They both have their own key. They slide on and lock both the same way. They both have an on and off switch and charge ports and USB charge ports. So if you need to charge something directly like your phone, you have two USB ports if you have the dual battery option. The other thing I like is that when I take the battery off, you have this on and off switch, which makes it easy to charge, check the level, turn it back off and make sure it doesn't drain. A lot of these batteries do not have that feature, which I think lets them drain a little quicker than having them be able to turn off just for safety and knowing that you're able to do that. These also have an equalizer underneath the seat with the controller to where they don't have to be at the exact same voltage. It will equalize the two of them so that you have output that matches in order to go to the motor. So you could ride with one that's say half charged and the other one being fully charged and there won't be any issues. Now, if you do this yourself and have two batteries, you need to make sure you have that equalizing uh, component of the system. Otherwise you could run into some issues with um, draining one battery too far and not draining the other one. But again, you do have that ability to just press the button on top to make sure that they're both fully charged or you could take one battery off and run it as a single battery system. You'll basically have the same amount of power and everything, you'll just have less range. So the dual batteries are kind of convenient. You don't have to worry about, you know, running out of battery with just one if you want to go longer distances. All right, so let's keep going here. So again, if you are a taller rider, you might not want to be using this bike for, say, climbing a lot of hills and pedaling all the time. I like it more as kind of a quick hop on cafe racer moped style bike. Um, Cause when your feet are even on the pedals like mine are now, your knees aren't too high and it's pretty cool little like angle that you're sitting at. Um, it's very different than a normal traditional mountain bike. And so I really like that feature a lot. I do want to go down this hill right here so I can test not only the brakes, which have barely just been bedded in, but also there's a sandy area down here and I want to see how it does going through the sand. So I like that the brakes aren't squeaking. Like I said, they aren't fully bed in all the way yet, but I'm working on that as we speak. So this is the first test ride of this bike. I haven't taken it out at all other than what you guys are seeing with me. So everything I'm seeing today is the first time experiencing this bike with you. All right. So, so far 
Really loving the bike, haven't had any issues yet. It's done everything I've expected, maybe even a little bit more. I do wanna see what the top speed is gonna be. So when we get over to this side of the lake here, where everyone launches their boats, we're gonna go to a flat spot on road and we're gonna see if this thing can get up to 28 miles an hour. I've seen it hit 23 on the dirt so far, which isn't bad, but I wanna see what that top speed is. One of the things I like to find out first when I have these e-bikes is how's the braking and then how fast can it go? Okay, here's the sandy area I was talking about. It's not the loosest sand, but it's pretty soft sand. And uh, if you're not in a fat tire bike, you will have problems in it. Um, I've come through here on electric scooters and other things, and it does okay if you have a pretty big tire, but it can really, um, you can get in a rut and slide a lot in that sand. And it did great. It went over it just like it was dirt. Not a lot of motor noise, but not the quietest motor. I'd say it's just a right about average of what I've heard for 750 watt motors. Pretty responsive on the throttle. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna throttle only. We're rolling stop, we're going 16, now 18. This is no pedaling. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So this is a flat ground throttle only test. 24 of 25. I'm gonna cut through the parking lot a little bit here. So 25 miles an hour with throttle only, which isn't too bad. It's only about three miles an hour off of the claim top speed of using the pedals, which will almost always make you go faster because you have that additional pedal input. Now remember, I am six foot three, 225 pounds, so that is gonna affect your top speed. If you weigh less than me, you'll obviously go a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. And if you're any heavier than me, you'll probably go a little tiny bit slower. So now what I wanna do is do the same run back and I'm gonna try and pedal and just see, I'm not gonna pedal really hard. I'm just gonna pedal, you know, as reasonably fast as I can. So we're in pedal assist five. So as you can see there, it took a couple seconds to kind of get us going. All right. Now, my other question would be, is it ghost pedal at all? Well, we're gonna find that out. I'm kind of pedaling pretty hard and fast at this point. 25 miles an hour, 26, 27. We're gonna keep going here. This is a little Y connection 28 okay so we did hit 28 there so i am having to pedal pretty hard but we are seeing that 28 mile per hour speed indicated so it is possible so leave a comment down below let me know what you guys think of this bike i've had a lot of fun riding it so far i'm really liking the look of it it's just the green and that that brown and tan with the black which is very different to me i've always gotten black bikes or white bikes or you know kind of boring standard colors and i really like the way this bike looks i do need to take these yellow stickers off which i will do also another thing that's really kind of cool with this that i got to mention one more time is these alloy wheels they're all kind of one piece and not having spokes not having to adjust or tension spokes is a great idea to be honest i'm surprised more bikes don't go spokeless because I'm not a fan of tensioning the spokes and they break and you know, you got to try to true the wheel. It's doable. Um, and I have the parts to do those things, but not really a big fan of that type of maintenance on a bike. Cause an e-bike really is a very low maintenance vehicle in a way. It uh, doesn't have a lot of parts that really have any problems. The batteries are pretty solid. The motor is, you know, they usually don't have any problems. I've had many e-bikes and I've never had to really do anything to them other than brakes, wheels, and to be honest, that's about it, you know? There's not a lot of other maintenance. So if they found a way to make the brakes last longer because they do wear out pretty quickly with the extra weight and power of the e-bike, you are replacing pads, but those are fairly cheap and really easy to do. But eliminating the wheel problem and the truing and the rusting of spokes over time, I think it's great. I think that's the way wheels should be made all one piece like that it's just it actually looks cool too again you know it looks very different you know you've seen this style of bike maybe before with the 20 inch tires and the four inch wide fat tires but wheels like that i haven't seen too many you know the dual headlight set up the way it is 
can't say that I've seen ones just like that. I have seen dual motor and dual suspension bikes, obviously, but you know, the look of these headlights is just kind of really cool and different with the shape of them. And also the screen, you know, you get a lot of those standard kind of displays, but this one is, is very different looking. Like I said, just a very different looking display. It's very clean. It's got your battery gauge here, your miles per hour, your pedal assist and your trip. And obviously you can change that to your odometer and it even has a max speed. So if you look there, it shows 28.2 miles per hour as the max speed, which is pretty cool. And your 13.6 mile an hour average speed. Cycle it in, it goes back to the trip. We're at 4.9 miles total on the trip odometer. Just a really cool setup. Um, sitting back like this is very different as well. I'm not used to sitting this far back on the bike and it's just a different feel. Like I said, your climb over, your step over height is very low because of the 20 inch tire and no rack and all that. So getting on the bike is fairly easy. You just lift your leg right over. Of course, I'm a taller guy, but I really like that because all my other bikes feel like they're a little more work to kind of get on and off. And this is more of just like a hop on and have fun quick type of bike. Plus the cafe style, just, you know, you're a little more hunched over. It's just really fun. It feels different, like I said, than a lot of the other mountain bikes that I've owned and mountain bikes that are e-bikes as well. All right, we're going to go up this hill here. We are going to go up at it full speed like we've done on other tests. And I'm going to see if it's able to take us all the way to the top at six foot three, 225 pounds. So we're slowing down 10, nine, eight, eight miles an hour. Not bad. Now I have gone up that steep hill. It's a loading dock. Actually, I have gone up that faster on more powerful bikes, but like I said, at 750 Watts nominal and a thousand Watts peak, that's not bad for a guy my size to be able to go up a hill like that. Yes. I have momentum. If I was stopped at the bottom and just full throttled it, it would not be able to make it up this hill. I don't even think some of my more powerful bikes would be able to do it without the momentum, but I like to do that test at kind of the full speed power and see when you get to the top, how fast are you going? Are you going eight miles an hour? Are you going 12 miles an hour? Or are you able to go 20 miles an hour at the top? Because this again is probably, I'd say a 10 degree slope. It's hard to tell in this video, but it's a pretty steep angle. When the lake comes up higher, this parking lot disappears and this becomes the loading dock, the loading ramp right here. And the water comes up higher and higher. A little single track action. Through the woods here. So we got a little headlights so you can kind of see what it would look like at night. Definitely easily adjustable headlights. You can even turn them independently so you can have one facing more forward and one facing kind of more backwards if you'd like. So would I buy this bike? Yes, I definitely think I would buy a bike like this. It's unique. It has dual batteries, dual suspension, dual headlights, integrated back light to the braking system alloy one piece wheels with no spokes and a different look and also a different style of horn display and just the aesthetics in general i think makes it kind of stand out as a different bike from the rest of the crowd now the other cool thing and i think one of the most important aspects of this bike is the price point you can get this model here with the dual batteries with a combined 13 amp hour of both batteries to 26 amp hours of battery storage. It's a 48 volt system, 750 watt motor with a thousand watts peak, and it has a seven speed turning derailleur. You're able to get all of this for $1,200. Now, if you don't need two batteries, you can get the single battery version for a thousand dollars. Okay. So think about that dual suspension, 1000 watt motor peak 28 mile per hour top speed all for a thousand dollars i mean you really can't go wrong at that price point in my opinion and to have something different you know because there's a lot of options out there believe me i know there's a lot of different e-bikes on the market but if you're looking for something affordable that hits all those points you want dual suspension top speed of almost 30 miles an hour no spokes to have to worry about dealing with in a unique look an Engway M20 is a great option. Be sure to check out their website. I'll also have a link in the description. Check that link out 
And also, if you're not interested in this particular model, there's a bunch of different ones to look at from Angway, including some more high-powered motors and bikes that they're going to be coming out with in the future. So be sure to check out their website, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.